Uh, well, <clears throat> thank you everyone for coming here today. I know it's a holiday, so uh, appreciate y'all being here. And uh, it's a pretty important day in the in the history of the Warriors. We're here to announce Mike Dunleavy as our new GM, and uh, very very excited about it. Um, I wanted to uh, to say first of all, Mike has you know been with us for five years. Is that right? Five. <laughs> Five years. I, it, almost impossible for me to imagine. It seemed so quickly that it went by. But I remember meeting Mike first with Bob. I think we were in New York. Mm -hmm. We had a dinner once about five years ago. And uh, here we are five years later. He's the new GM of the Warriors. So really excited. I want to say, first of all, I think we're very, very fortunate that uh, he was in our organization. Uh, and uh, I think we had a <clears throat> good sense. I had a good sense all along that if something ever did happen with Bob that um, and you know, which was a possibility, clearly, uh, that we had someone in waiting that, and, and in training uh, for the job. He's 20 years of experience in the NBA, you know, 15 years, I believe, as a player, um, and uh, five years with us. So a lot of experience with NBA, with coaches, with, with teams, with organizations, with the league, and all that. So I'm actually a really experienced guy when you really get down to it, if you really think about it, in terms of the NBA. Uh, he is a, a person who has a family guy, has four kids. Um, he's he's fits culturally and has fit culturally uh, very much in you know in line with the way this organization runs uh, and operates, and is a very collaborative person, uh, which is very very important because I've said it a million times in our organization. We it's a we thing, and I I mean I can't emphasize how important that is. This is a we deal. This is not me. This is not. You know, Steve Kerr only. It wasn't Bob, just Bob Myers. It's not just the players, although we have, do have some great players, including one in particular that is fantastic in terms of legendary with this franchise. But it really is a we effort, and Mike fits right into that. The cultural fit was spectacular. The cultural fit was spectacular with Mike. And so I think we're, you know, very, very excited to have him here today and um, uh, to be able to announce him and his appointment to the job. Uh, I, I want to say right off the bat, I don't anticipate any other title changes uh, in the uh, organization. With Mike is the GM. Um, Kirk will, in case I know people are going to ask this, Kirk is going to remain in his title, which is, I think it's EVP. I don't pay a lot of attention to titles, to be frank, but um, basically same role he's had, and he's been with us for 13 years, so he has a role in the organization. And there'll probably be some other changes Mike will make uh, going forward uh, within the organization, uh, you know, raising the responsibilities of some, obviously to take up some of the slack. But overall, very, very excited to have him and welcome him here today. Well, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Um, let me just start with thanking you and Peter and uh, our whole ownership group for this opportunity. Uh, re really, really special moment for me and my family. Um, this, this is one of the premier organizations in all sports. And so for me to be able to have the opportunity to uh, continue to lead our group uh, means a tremendous amount certainly have some work cut out for us, but uh, I think the future is bright. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge and thank my predecessor, Bob Myers. Uh, Bob's been an agent for me. I've worked for him. He's been a great mentor. But most of all, he's been a great friend. And um, we're all going to miss him here. I know I speak for everybody. Uh, big shoes to fill, but um, you know we've got a great group, great collaboration. It's, it's very doable. Um, it's funny, I was talking to Bob this week, and he asked me if you know, you're going to do the job. And I said, yeah, I think so. But you know, i got to be honest, I'm a little uncomfortable you know, taking your job. And he said, don't leave me. Come on, man. It's not like you're taking an organ. It's just a job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we sort of had a laugh about that. And after, at that point, I was like, all right, I'm good to go here. Got Bob's approval, which is good. And, He's somebody I've leaned on and will continue to lean on, as will a lot of people in our organization. So thank you, Bob, for all you've done with this, with this team. And um, you will be missed, but we know you'll be around. Uh, the other people I'd like to thank are my family, um, my parents. Obviously, a lot of people know my dad from coaching and playing and also doing, being a GM. So he's uh, set a tremendous example, example for me growing up, uh, my mom as well. Anything you may say good about me probably is from my mom, not my dad. <laughs> and so uh, thanks, Mom. And then uh, lastly, last but not least, recognize my immediate family, my four kids. My oldest daughter Lucy's here today. And most especially my wife, Sarah, who um, 
if anybody knows this this business, the, the moving around, it's, it's very transient, tough hours, strange things, a lot of unknowns. And so having a support system like family and, and a wife like, like Sarah has been tremendous. So you're a rock. I really appreciate it. And um, thanks for everything. And, and, and thanks for the stuff moving forward because I know uh, <laughs> you'll be quite busy. <laughs> um, now, as far as the job, I'd say, um, you know, it starts now. You've got a big week with the draft coming up. Um, and our roster is uh, our roster is in a good place. I'd say we don't have too many decisions to make, but we've had we have things to consider, and um, we will take a lot of things into account. Uh, the draft is is, is a, certainly one of the three areas we feel like we can improve on. And looking back on last year, you know, by all accounts, we had a successful season. But for us, you know, finishing the top eight after winning the championship, we know we want to be better. And and our goal this summer. Will be to go about improving, improving our roster. Uh, we, we got some play. We got one key player that we love to bring back, and then after that, you know, my main objective, our group's main objective, would be to to improve. If you like going into it, we've we've got a shot to contend for a title again. So I'm confident about that. I'm excited to continue working with uh, our great players, our coaches, and our staff. Um, as Joe mentioned. The thing that I've experienced here and feel great about is the collaboration, all of us working together and you know, creating the synergy that, that's, that's gone so well here. So um, really appreciative of the job and the opportunity, Joe. Thanks again. And um, you know, here we go. I'm open to any questions or anything anybody has. Yes. Uh, so much of what Bob uh, was known for was his relationships, established relationships with the, the main players, you know, Draymond, Steph, Clay. Where, how do you feel like your relationship, established relationship is with those guys right now? Yeah, I think it's good. You know, I've reached out to those guys in the, in the last week or so, and we've had good conversation um, getting to know them over the last few years, even more so. We have the mutual respect of, being, of having played. You know, I played 15 years in the league. Nowhere near as accomplished as those guys, but I think there's a mutual bond and understanding. And, and like I said, I've gotten to know those guys well enough over the last few years, and we'll continue to do so. Um, but those guys, um, you know, they're the core of what we do. So having a relationship with them is important. Mike, Bob said last month when he <clears throat> on his departing uh, news conference that uh, you could do the job. You'd be great if you want it. <laughs> So was there a thought process here that you had to go through in addition to talking to Bob that told you, okay, this is what I want to do, or, or did you want a job all along? Yeah, I think any time um, you know, an opportunity like this comes up, it, in most cases it's a no-brainer, but you should always think through things. Uh, I'm pretty measured in my approach. I'll do that. We'll do that with our decisions um, going forward. But sure, you, you know, I think you want to talk to your family about it and consider things, but when Joe presented me with the opportunity, um, I, I just didn't see a way where I, I didn't want to do it. Mike, uh, when you left here, probably wasn't the best terms as a player. Uh, when did you, like, what was it like coming back into the organization? Was there a part of you that's like, I'm never going back there again? Or like, when, how did you smooth that part out? Yeah, you know what's funny is, um, you know, it's how things can kind of come full circle. Although, like, that circle that I was in when I played, I mean, it's a different city. It was almost like a different organization, different city, um, different team, far less success. So. To say it's come full circle probably wouldn't be accurate, but ever since I've gotten back, you know, I've felt very comfortable. Um, this is a tremendous organization. Go in there and see the banners that are up. Uh, much different than when I was here as a player. But I, I have learned that in this league, when you leave a situation or trade it or move on, things come back around. You know, my dad played for the Milwaukee Bucks. He coached for the Milwaukee Bucks as assistant. He came back as a head coach, and then I went there as a player. So I've moved, I've moved to and from Milwaukee four times. So I've learned in this business, you don't, you don't really cross anything off, off the books. And um, so needless to say, coming back here has been great. Love our fan base. Uh, the passion's amazing. And you kind of felt that in the last five years. And I think we all just want to kind of keep this thing going. Mike, um, you said there aren't that many huge decisions to make. But obviously, most of us on the way driving over here heard about Draymond opting out. Um, and one, were you expecting that? And two, I mean, you are getting thrown kind of right into the fire of uh, a, a pretty critical summer for, for this team as in terms of what it's going to look like in the future. Just are you prepared for that? And uh, again, were you surprised about Draymond? Yeah, so I, I saw the report too. Um, until we get the paperwork in the filing, we can't really 
commenters say much. So um, I will say, I think Steve has said it, and I'll reiterate, we really want Draymond back. Um, what he means to this organization, this team, in terms of trying to win at the highest level, uh, we, we, we feel like we have to have him. Um, so that's very important. Um, beyond that, yeah, I mean, I think a lot can be made of all the challenges that, that are coming our way, whether it be aging roster, the new CBA with some of the limitations there, um, anything else you can bring up. But um, we're aware of all those things, but we also feel like we're in a great, great place because we've got a competitive owner willing to spend and a, a group that's really tied in. It's got good synergy, good processes, good sound decision making. So we, we feel confident we can navigate it. Uh, Mike, you worked with Bob for a number of years. What do you think is similar with the way you guys operate and what differentiates you in the way that you operate? They're both tall. <laughs> and, we have bad, and we have bad hips. And they have bad hips, I've learned. They both have bad hips. Um, you know, I think it's, as far as similarities, um, you know, we're really close, so I guess there's got to be a lot of things that align. But, um, you know, I'd probably start with humility. I think for the most part we're pretty humble guys, um, family first, and um, I think we're good listeners. Both like to hear people out and hear groups out and as, as leaders, you know, try and make the right decision. Uh, differences, um, I think I'm a slightly better basketball player than him. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, but, you know, a after that, Bob, Bob is <coughs> out of this world talented in, in what he's able to do with people. And, um, you know, his, his record speaks for itself. So um, if I, you know, if I could be anywhere near the realm of successful as he's been here, it would, it would be, it'd be great. Joe, I just kind of wanted to ask, um, you know, I know you mentioned like the collaborative approach that the front office has always taken, but obviously there is an ultimate decision maker or power structure within a front office. Do you view, you know, Mike's elevation to the level from a power structure standpoint that Bob was at or, or is that shifting at all? No, it's, um, <clears throat> he's the top basketball decision maker. You can call it titles, whatever you want. But he's the top basketball decision maker in the organization. Um, and, uh, you know, perhaps a little bit of difference is that when Bob came in, actually, it's hard to remember, you know, all these years ago now, but he came in right as an agent uh, and uh, was an assistant GM, actually, when he started. And we promoted him to GM. And then he got a title change subsequently, you know, with success and more of a, more of a compensation thing, I think, more than anything else, because he was really in the same role. Uh, and so Mike is in the same role. And he's the top decision maker within basketball. So from my standpoint, he's the guy that I'll be calling however many times people think I call him a day. Actually, he called me this morning. I just want you to know, woke me up. Uh, actually, I was up, but I was watching a show on TV, first take. <laughs> Joe, a couple quick questions. Uh, have you already been calling and texting Mike uh, recently? Is that a serious question? <laughs> <laughs> well, when did, when did you first start texting and calling? Well, first of all, it started long before he got this job. Um, you know, Obviously, we, we communicate. I communicate not only with, did communicate only with Bob, but, you know, with Kirk and Larry Harris and the draft and Mike, but not, not as often. Obviously, Bob got the brunt of that. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we communicate a lot. And one of the things that you have to be able to do to do this job, you have to be a good communicator. He has to be able to communicate, you know, to the players, with the players. And I think he's going to be great at it, by the way. As a former player, it certainly will help. He has to communicate to his employees, people who work for him in basketball operations. And he's got to be able to communicate up, you know, which is me. You. <laughs> and uh, that's actually all CEOs in companies, if you want to compare it to that, it's kind of the same thing. That's what makes a great CEO, a great leader, is someone who can do all three levels of communication, here, here, and here. And this guy has that ability. He's a really good communicator. He's very thorough in his thinking. He's very analytical. He's very, me you use the word measured, which is another word I, I really like. Um, he's a, 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 he thinks in a measured way. He, he doesn't just blurt things out. He, so I think he's going to be fantastic at this job. And uh, you know, we've been communicating for a long time, and we still we do and will going forward. Just follow up is, you know, he, other than Mike being there, which he was, um, what kind of questions did you ask about him? What did you need to hear from him? to beat out other candidates? And did you interview other candidates seriously, or was it always going to be Mike? I mean, there was not a decision that had been made, because I don't think I or we wanted to kind of even contemplate Bob leaving. We obviously liked Bob a lot, and uh, he, was, he was great. So until he made a decision, I, didn't I don't think I really allowed myself to, 
to think about that very much. But once he made the decision, which was you know pretty late in the process, um, I think in the background what had been going on is you know processing how would we go about this. And I always knew that we had this guy sitting here in the wings. Um, had to have a conversation with him. We did have conversations, obviously, uh, to make sure that everything I thought was correct uh, and everything he thought about the job, he wanted, you know, I don't know if he wanted it as well, so that we're on the same wavelength. So did I interview other people? No, not really. Um, we didn't go outside, if that's what your question, because I think we believe in continuity. We believe we have a really well-oiled machine, good running, well-running organization. And Mike, you know, gets along fabulously with all the parties inside. Everything from, you know, um, Kirk Lacob to um, Brandon Schneider sitting right here. He's very interactive with the business side, which I think is a, a great thing in our organization, uh, and all the coaches and players.